Most people find MailerLite when looking for a newsletter tool and they get hooked because it's cheap. But as we know, cheap means the tool is bad, right? No, MailerLite is quite good and there's only one big reason to avoid it. And that reason is not the price. In fact, MailerLite has a great free plan. With a free account, they allow you to send 12,000 emails per month, build 10 landing pages and one website, put signup forms on your blog, and the best of all, they let you use email automation. Later in the video, you will see why email automation is great, but just know that most tools don't have automation on their free plans. So big points for MailerLite here. On top of having a good free plan, MailerLite also has affordable prices if you want to use the more advanced features. And the paid plans start at $9 for 1,000 subscribers. This is a good deal when comparing MailerLite to ConvertKit, which charges a lot more money for basically the same. In my opinion, MailerLite is the best like-for-like -like alternative to ConvertKit as the tools are similar. If you want to see a video comparison of those two tools, let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel. After all this talk about MailerLite being cheap, let's see how you can make your money back. By default, you can make money with memberships and digital downloads on MailerLite. As a side note, you can also manually put ads on your newsletter. But that's a workaround, instead of a native advertisement network like ConvertKit and Beehive have. So to make money, you just need to create a landing page, connect MailerLite to Stripe and select a product. For example, for a subscription, add the person to the premium newsletter group after they pay, and then you create a newsletter like you normally do, and select the premium group to receive the newsletter, as simple as that. Hi, Editing Tiago here. Just to say that the original script missed an important part. Enabling monetization on MailerLite is in fact easy, but MailerLite has a problem with authentication. No, God, please, no, no! Currently, you can sell access to a premium newsletter and put the content on a password protected page on MailerLite. But the password will be the same for all subscribers. So if someone sends the password to a friend or in the worst case scenario, shares it online, Everyone with a password can access the page and read the content even if they don't pay you. This is not good and I don't recommend using MailerLite for paid newsletters using this method. Now, back to Tiago from the past recording outside. Now let's see how to make your newsletter prettier with templates. Actually, MailerLite has templates for emails, landing pages, websites and pop-ups. So there are plenty of options that you can use to customize it to your style. And that's exactly what I did. I picked one of the default templates, changed the colors and made a style I like. You know, I'm a kind of a designer myself. If you use the advanced plan, you can get a custom HTML editor and customize every pixel of the newsletter to create a truly unique style. This brings us to the editor and writing experience. MailerLite has three different types of editors to create newsletters. The drag and drop, which is probably the most used with content blocks and that kind of stuff, similar to website builders. Then there's the rich text editor. This will be a good option if you get distracted by the other options or just want to create only text content. The last option is the custom HTML editor that allows you to customize everything as I said earlier. However, there's one thing that I need to mention about the writing experience on MailerLite. They have a small bug where shortcuts like undo and redo don't work. And sometimes when I am writing and I delete a line by mistake, I cannot restore the content. This annoys me because I use shortcuts a lot. And because of this, I use most of my content on my note taking app just to be safe. But this bug is not the reason I said for you to avoid MailerLite. That reason will still come later in the video. Now let me tell you the best surprise I found on MailerLite, landing pages. I already have a blog, so I didn't think landing pages were useful and I was not planning on using them. But I was wrong. If you create content on social media or YouTube videos like the idiot that's talking right now, you can share the link to a page where the only action people can take is to subscribe. This will make people subscribe instead of getting distracted by reading articles on your blog. For example, you can go to the link that's appearing on the screen and subscribe to my newsletter. Another example is that you can create landing pages to sell your courses. This is a fast and easy thing to do that don't require code or any extra cost. On top of that, MailerLite is also developing some blogging capabilities. So they are following the path to become more like a Beehive or Substack direct alternative. Although the blogging capabilities are still incomplete and a little buried in the sites section of the dashboards. But the rest of the dashboard is pretty nice. MailerLite did an update and made things a lot more pleasant to look at. 
The dashboard gives you a quick summary of your account and the performance from the latest campaigns. When it comes to analytics, you can dive into individual campaigns and also see data for individual subscribers, like segmenting the most engaged followers. Another thing I like is that MailerLite allows you to invite team members to collaborate in creating content without having to share passwords. Overall, I get the feeling that things just work and are easy to use. Another thing I love and one of the biggest reasons that made me use MailerLite was email automation. Even here, MailerLite has workflow templates like a simple welcome, retargeting, delivering courses by email, or more advanced stuff. As you can see, this gives you a lot of options to interact more with subscribers or help sell your products. On top of everything I said, MailerLite has a massive list of support articles and videos that will help with basically everything. For example, I followed one of their tutorials to authenticate my domain, and this involved changing DNS records, which is something that can go wrong very quickly and create problems. But no, everything worked the first time. So, this brings us to the elephant in the room. What are the reasons to not use MailerLite? In my opinion, the reason to not use MailerLite is that you need to enter a physical address before you can send emails. This means you will need a business address or PO box to use it. And I know that not everyone has a PO box, especially at the beginner stage. So this is the biggest turnoff about MailerLite in my opinion. Hi, Editing Tiago again. As you just saw, I am a big fan of MailerLite and I am using it since the start of 2023. I think MailerLite is a fantastic platform that is suited for beginners and professional creators as they have most features creators want and need. And as of today, I recommend MailerLite. Just make sure you know its current limitations when it comes to authentication for paid newsletters and the requirement to have a physical address publicly on the newsletter. So after all this, I give MailerLite a rating of it works very well and I love it. You can sign up for an account using my link in the description. Thanks for watching.